seen a lot of the KOAs do it. Where they have somebody that can take you to your spot. If not, they usually give you a map when you go to check in and they'll tell you pretty much how to get there. Okay. So this is not a back end site. This is a full end site. So All right, guys, so we have decided to move sites um, just because there wasn't going to be enough room for us to show you everything we wanted to show you. And I apologize, they're doing some construction right there. But here is Trace driving. So most of these Class A's and a lot of the Class C's have backup cameras on them so she can see what I'm doing but you would just back it in like any other vehicle you just have to have enough room but as you can see everything here is wide enough and it's meant for you know RVs of this size to be able to to maneuver like this there we go she's backing in so just uh you know back it in it has it also has cameras on the side of the mirrors as well to help you see on the sides there and then you just keep backing in till you hit the end of the room and the end of the spot there or to leave room for the other car in our case we're going to park my car in front of this and then you have your power pedestal and water right here which we'll show you guys how to hook that up power pedestal and then this is going to be the sewer dump so for all you guys worried about the black tank and gray tank that's where that'll get handled uh, when we're ready to to do that okay y'all so here we are in the rv and this is actually a point of view of what it looks like with the slide in this is what it would be like driving down the road now the one thing nice about this one is that you do have access to the bathroom if you are driving this is what it looks like and then of course you have I'll take you in through here because this is a walkthrough and then this is how the slide this is a complete wall slide so it goes all the way down the right side different ones are different but this one you don't have to have the motor on to slide it out and there's usually just a button that says slide in slide out and what you'll do is you'll just push this button where it says out and then as you can see it takes it a minute just keep the button pressed in and you can see how it's opening up go and it'll just stop when it's out fully and then you have your walkthrough space to the bedroom and there you go so jacks down jacks are down and then you pull the slide out and then next we gotta hook up the water and power yep so here we go all right guys so now you can see that's the the slide out and now we have to connect to power and water and so the hoses and electrical cords um, you know you generally store here in these basement compartments um, since this is a rental I think they're all in this one spot so Trace is going to show us how we do that yeah, they're normally in a spot and you just have your electrical cord to pull out. Alright, so pull the electrical cord out so and then... Pull the electrical cord out and this one is a 50 amp 
most I think are going to 50 you know. They are you except have some that are 30. The older ones especially are, can be 30. Yeah. yeah, and then you get an adapter yeah. to put on the end of it. But since this is 50 and the box is 50, you just go to your box. Go to your box. You raise it up. Always make sure that it's off when you plug it in. You'll have your 50 amp, your 30 amp, and your 20 amp. And most of them will state what they are, but always make sure that it's off before you plug it in. And then how do you know which one of these to put it in? Well, because of the way the prongs are. Okay. You can pretty much tell. And plus, like this one actually says 30 amp. Okay. And obviously that's going to be the 50 amp, and it says 50A right here. Okay. So, and then you just plug it in, make sure it's in there tight, and then just flip the switch. And you can usually hear a pop over where the cord comes from the RV. You can usually hear a pop, and that usually means that you have electricity. There you go. What's next? Now we're going to hook up the water. Okay. So as you can see, if you want to come around here first, here's the water spigot. All right. And then on this one, you have a city water connection. Let me get in there. And a fresh tank water fill. Now this you use if you're going to be using water from your tank in the RV. And then this one, if you're just going to run your water continuously through a water hookup, this is what you'll hook up to. Yes. A lot of times these just screw off. So you're going to want water. You want a little bit of water in your tank most of the time. Yeah. Um, obviously, except for like if you're driving down the road or you're boondocking, you want to have a little bit of water available. It does add weight. A little bit. Yeah. The other thing is, which we will get to... Um, soon and dumping the tanks keeping water in um the the black and the gray tank also helps make sure that you can drain them all completely and we'll right. talk talk about more of that right when we do that and now this one has a water pressure regulator on it yep and this is so it helps when you hook it up or hook it in there i'm sorry then you can actually it regulates how much water pressure actually comes through yeah because these are not the same pipes you have in your house exactly. and if you've got too much pressure coming out of a, a campground it does happen and it can you know bust the the pipes in the rv yeah. so so this like this one right here it says a 40 to 50 psi max outlet pressure so this will give you good pressure but it will regulate it at the same time yep right here stick your hose in there and these things will turn like this it might take a minute to get it in there you want to make sure it's good and snug in there so then you'll just take this in and screw it on to your water faucet outside. Make sure it's good and snug. And I kind of like to make sure there's no kinks in the hose. And then just turn it on. Yeah. So now we're just gonna let this run and we'll have water. Yep. So all you hooked up. That? Yep. All right, guys. So we decided to go ahead and fill the tanks just so you guys could see how this works. In this one, um, you have to press the button to see, and you notice there's a fresh. There's one for your propane, your battery level, your black tank, your gray tank, and auxiliary. But right now we're focusing on fresh. As you can see, we're probably close to a half a tank. Um, just to show you guys. Yeah, the red lights show, um, yeah, a third, a half, and then we're getting close to two-thirds. Black, I mean, you're going to have some registration on it always, but you don't have to worry about emptying it until you get, you know, to full or very close to it. Same with gray. Your propane, which you need for, um, your heat, your water heater, if you're not plugged in. It's probably propane water heater. Well... No, if you're not plugged in. So, 
can notice the, the propane is full. So you just press the button to see which one you want to see. And while we're here, when you're using water off of the tank, you have to turn on the water pump. Uh, you know, only use, only turn it on when you need it. I don't, I wouldn't recommend leaving it on all the time. Some people may, but we just never have. The other thing is the water heater. If you want to have hot water, oh yeah, you got to turn that on. Now, to do that, it, you know, you only have about six gallons of water, which is not a lot. So think Navy showers. Um, a lot of people uh, will put on there. I don't know if this one has it. A lot of people will buy a shower head that has an on-off switch, so you can, you know, get get yourself wet, then turn the water off, lather up, and then turn it back on. Because if not, you will quickly run out of hot water. And we took plenty of those. And yeah, we, yeah. And it works just fine. It works fine. Yeah, it works completely fine. Um, the other thing to think about, if you're not in a park where you have easy access to dump, the gray water will always fill up faster than the black. So gray is anything that's coming from your sinks, your shower, anything that's not the toilet, basically, is going to fill up your gray tank. So you have to think about that if you're brushing your teeth. You know, don't leave the water running while you're brushing your teeth, even washing dishes. Get the sink full of sudsy water on one side and maybe clear water on the other or so soak them all up first and then spray them off really quick um, those are just some ways to, to try and save water um, so those are some tips on on how to manage the water piece of it obviously you also have your um, air conditioner here now right now i've got this on got it set to go to 68 we'll see if it gets there we had it turned off just to show you guys the whole process it's been pretty pretty warm here today let's see where we are now so still not quite two-thirds um, we've got the hot water tank on and the um, the water pump we should be good okay y'all so now that we have everything hooked up now I'm just going to show you around the outside show you like the storage areas um, where you would connect the sewer which we're going to do at some point we haven't done it today um, but we'll go from there so here you are the front of the rv and obviously you can see where it's hooked up the slide i will say a word of warning be careful if you have a slide that slides out and you have the underneath compartments because you will hit your head and it does not feel good and yes I know from experience but so in here you just have a little cubby it's pretty deep in here that is your propane which you can see and this obviously is where the electrical is and then you have more storage And then this is where your water is. This is where you would hook up for septic for your black tank. That your black tank and your gray tank release, which we will show you in another video. And then back here you have your generator. Here, you have another area and if you look you have where you can you have some things you can just slide in like chairs or tables or something like that you can just slide it in there there you get some more storage And here you have some more storage so you know you have plenty of storage there you go you have plenty of storage 
and you know you don't want to weigh down the RV too much just because you have a bunch of storage but you have enough for your chairs your you know but um, utensils if you have a dog dog stuff kids kids toys games I mean anything you want to put under there chairs tables I mean obviously you have plenty of room and plenty of storage so um, we'll just continue to show you around okay guys something that's extremely important is this is for when you set up and when you leave a campground but also when you're just leaving for the day mm -hmm. have checklists and I don't mean just up here I mean like an actual either on your phone or piece of paper piece of paper have a checklist so you know when you pull into a campsite you know, make sure the power works. Make sure that you're plugged in all the way. Um, you know, make sure the water works. Make sure it's not leaking. Make sure, you know, your you, your sewer hose can reach the sewer connection. Make sure your level. I mean, and the thing is, don't just have this checklist and, you know, everybody's just running around doing all this. And because if you're doing that, some you're going to do the same things and you're going to miss something. Yep. So, whether it be, um, obviously, if it's just you traveling single, then, you know, hey. Right. <laughs> you're the responsible one. Right. But if you have, you know, if you're traveling with a family, or if you're just traveling with a partner or a friend or whoever, you know, each of you have your own individual checklist of things that you have to do when you pull in or pull out or regard go for the day or whatever. Yeah. And then... You have a double check process that once once everybody says they're done, you know, I so for us Trace would do all the outside stuff and I would do the inside stuff, you know, and then we would go back through and just double check, you know, like I would make sure in our case and in, in, in the motorhome we had we had to have the parking brake engaged and the motor on to be able to put the levels down and to let the slide out so i would make sure that you know all of that was done correctly um you'll make sure that there was nothing blocking the the slide out so that it would get caught and, and potentially break the slide out and so we would we would do that and then double check each other mm -hmm. so like my responsibilities were the outside stuff of making sure that the electric was hooked up right, making sure that the water was hooked up, making sure that we were close enough for when we wanted to dump our sewer, you know, because the one thing in an RV that is the shortest is the sewer hookup yep. and sewer hose. So you got to make sure that if you have one at your site, you got to make sure that the sewer hose is going to be able to reach when you want to dump it. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, the other thing is when we would go out for the day or, you know, even during the day, make sure that you understand what the weather forecast is because, you know, most motorhomes have, or most RVs of any kind, have awnings. And we have seen awnings get absolutely ripped to shreds because people left them out during a storm we've even seen people drive off with them out i mean everything you can imagine and they are expensive yes they are very those would be very expensive mistakes and so you know obviously they're they're pretty fragile and so if the wind is high you do not want to have your awning out and if you're going to be gone for the day even though the weather may look great always bring your awning in and you know, don't take don't take it back out until you know you're there and you can watch it and you would have the ability to bring it in really quick if, if for some reason a storm did pop up. Yeah, because you can be especially out west. Mm -hmm. You can be out west and you know it's beautiful. You're going for the day to go sightseeing. You're thinking, oh, it's a gorgeous day. There's no rain in sight. Winds calm, and about that time you get to wherever it is you are and a storm can pop up out of nowhere or a windstorm can pop up out yep. of nowhere yeah and yeah and your awning just trash yeah <laughs> yeah we've we saw it many many times yeah many times so that is very important 
awnings are great. I mean, obviously, they can keep the sun off of you if you're sitting outside. But they also help keep your RV cooler. Um, particularly, you know, in the summertime with the sun coming in, it can get really toasty. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you have the awning blocking that sun, that does help keep the temperature right. But do not be tempted to leave it out while you're gone because yeah. that's, a, that's a big, costly mistake. Because even when you think it's not going to happen to you, it'll that's happen. when it will. Absolutely. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments or anything you want to see in this series, please leave them in the comments below. And just remember, until next time, live your best life. Bye, y'all. See you.